I love to praise Him. I love to praise Him. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His. You know that I love to praise His holy name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His. You know that I love to praise His holy name. He is my rock. He is my my rock. My rock. My sword. He's my will, he's mine in the middle. I know he'll never, he'll never, he's such a jewel that I have found. Church sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I love to praise his and church sing hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I love to praise his and church sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I love to praise his and you know that I love to praise his holy name. He's my rock. He's my, my rock, my rock, my sword. He's my will, he's my in the middle. I know he'll never, he'll never. He's such a jewel that I have. Church sing hallelujah, hallelujah, oh I love to praise his name, church sing hallelujah, hallelujah, oh I love to praise his name, church sing hallelujah, hallelujah, oh I love to praise his name, you know that I love to praise his Holy name, he's my rock, he's my, my rock, my rock, my sword. He's my will, he's my, in the middle. I know he'll never, he'll never, he's such a jewel. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I love to praise his and church sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I love to praise his and church sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I love to praise his and you know that I love to. In the morning, I love to. In the evening, I love to praise His holy name. Let the church say amen. The church say amen. Again, ain't God good, church? And does He deserve our praise? We serve a, a mighty a great and an awesome God. We thank him so much for everything he do in our life. And we thank him so much that we are able to come out here with the right mind to worship him in deed and spirit and in truth. He did not have to wake us up this morning, church. But I'm so glad that he did. Uh, we just want to continue to keep the church um, in thought of praying for those who are on our prayer request list. Uh, we have some families that are hurting right now, and so we continue to keep them in our prayers. And um, I heard some good news by yesterday. 
late day inspiration that happened here at the Bessemer location. Uh, I knew it was good. My wife didn't bring me no cake home, and then, <laughs> you know, she ain't, usually she bring me some back, you know. But I think I said, well, y'all must have had a good time. Because everything seemed to be gone, amen. But I heard my, my bitches was on the scene, my head was on the scene, and, and Brother Mac, you know you don't have to go to work like that, hey, you know. You, they didn't put you to work. They didn't put you to work. We got some hardworking men that's behind the scene, church, of indeed this congregation. Um, if you pass by here on any day, they may be tearing out bricks or doing something. And I be saying, them, them, them some strong men right there. And I know a lot of us don't see what they do. But I want us to appreciate what God has blessed us with, indeed in this congregation, to have uh, good leadership that we are up under. So continue to pray for the, their strength and their zeal for God as they do construction work and preach the word of God. Amen. Um, just want to keep just want to keep us in mind of the things that we have going on here at the congregation. Um, uh, for those who are interested in becoming deacons, I want all the brothers to try to come back at 3:30 um, to try to listen to um, a young man's journey to becoming a deacon. Um, it's 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 a, it's a great story to hear. And he's willing to share it with us, and hopefully it'll inspire those who want to take on that role um, of, of, of being a deacon, indeed, in this congregation. And so um, I think it'll be a, a well worth the time to come out here for an hour to indeed hear Brother Abraham Clark. Amen? Um, but today, this morning, um, I want to go on and get into the lesson uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Got a phone call earlier this week. Job called me and told me, you're going to work the weekend. And I said, all right. I went, I went in the best of mood about it. So I, I went to work last night at 11 o'clock and got off this morning. And, um, and we're here today. And many people asked me during my, my time on the ground, my crew said, well, what you going to do about Sunday, uh, JB? I said, well, as long as I'm able, I will be uh, in the right place serving the Lord. Y'all heard what I said? As long as I am able, able, because uh, I have no excuse, uh, but as long as I'm able, I will indeed be in the, the right place serving the Lord. I invited them. I guess they weren't able this morning, <laughs> but I, I was indeed able. So I said, we, we can sleep later on, but it's, it's a time to go and worship the Lord indeed in spirit and in truth, because one day we're going to sleep for a long time. So therefore, as long as we got breath in our body, have a mindset of always wanting to come and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Second Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter 1. All have it. Say amen. amen. The Bible reads, uh, verse 8, uh, but, but be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Verse 9 says, um, who have saved us called us to an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which he was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life, immortality, and light through the gospel, whereunto I am appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the for the which uh, cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep thee which I have committed unto him against that day. Verse 13 says, Hold fast to the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That's in your Bible. Today, for a subject title, it'll be called Embracing Exampleship. Embracing Exampleship. We all, at some time during life experience, uh, have been up under the responsibility pendulum of somebody else. Then there comes a time where the pendulum of responsibility leaves somebody else and swings our way. And once we are uh, being up under somebody else's uh, umbrella responsibility, then we are, uh, are up under somebody else's care, 
up under somebody else's mentorship, up under somebody else's direction. But then there comes a time where the responsibility pendulum is on top of us. Then we have people under our care, up under our tutelage, up under our mentorship. And one time we have to understand is that when responsibility is indeed upon us, we are becoming mentors. We become guiders. We become directors in somebody's life. In other words, we leave from being mentor to becoming the mentors ourselves. And so write this down, Trey. Write this down for uh, just a, a quick note. Exampleship before leadership. Exampleship before leadership. That means that before you can properly leave, you need to know the identity of the one that you are trying to mentor. What are you trying to shape and what are you trying to mold? Um, therefore, they must see it in you first. Amen? And so here, here is a question. Uh, is there anybody that feels like they are leading somebody today? Uh, uh, is somebody under your care? Is somebody under your tutelage? Is somebody that you are mentoring in your life? And this does not it just include family. This can include uh, co-workers. This can include friends. This can include neighbors. Therefore, um, how many feel that they are leading in somebody's life? Amen. Uh, because many times uh, we identify that we are somebody in somebody's life, but therefore, do we identify that, yes, I play a leading role in mentorship in somebody's life? Then if you feel like you are leading, how many feel that they're leading somebody's life? If you feel like you are leading, are you embracing it? Amen? Are you embracing it? Look at this uh, Second Chronicles chapter number 1 and verse number 10. A man by the name of Solomon had took upon the kingship of Israel, and God had asked him, whatever you ask me, I'm going to give you. All you got to do is just pray unto me, and I'm going to give you what you need. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 10 says, and Solomon responds, he says, Give, give me, me now wisdom, wisdom and knowledge and knowledge that I, may that go I out might go out and come in and come in before this people be behind the people before this people in the middle of the people no sir before, before this people before this people for who, for who can, can judge, judge this thy people this thy people that is so great Solomon is saying that I'm going to be in the front in leading the people and he asked God for indeed wisdom and not that many times people will say well I need to be rich I, I, I need to have long life. I, 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 need, I need to have stature before I can leave. But Solomon being a wise man, wanted to be the wisest person. He asked for wisdom and knowledge. In other words, he wanted intellect. He wanted the right mindset as he stood in the front of God's how many of us have prayed that God blesses us with wisdom and knowledge to understand his way, to understand his statutes, to understand his commandments, to be a leader inside of his kingdom? Solomon had the right mindset when he prayed because he knew that he had to stand in front of the people. In Numbers chapter 26 Starting at verse 15, um, we see that Moses um, was, was about to take on, that might be the wrong verse, but, but in Numbers, uh, a man by the name of um, um, Joshua was elected to be leader. And he, therefore, he had to be a man to be able to want to stand out in front of the people. God said he got to have the right spirit. And therefore, we have to understand that when we are leading people, whether we're leading children, whether we're leading in our household, whether we are leading in our neighborhood, whether we are leading in our business, that we have to have the wisdom and the knowledge of God to properly lead anybody. 
So therefore, church, I want to look at this definition, embrace. That's the question. Are we embracing it? Are we embracing it? The word embrace, y'all look at this now. Y'all write this down if y'all, y'all want to write this down because I want to make sure that everybody understand that, uh, that as we are, are Christians, we are all expected to lead somebody to Jesus. Amen? Amen. We're all expected to, to make disciples throughout the world. But are we embracing it? The word embrace means to accept or support willingly and what that word is, church, enthusiastically. Yes, are we excited about leading somebody? Are we willing? Are we, are, are, are we fighting against it, though, church? Are we willingly and enthusiastically embracing being somebody example? Look at the word example, church. The word example, the word example. The word example means a person or a thing regarding to the term of fitness to be what, church? Imitated. Imitated. That means if we're trying to lead people to Jesus and we're trying to lead people to be disciples of Christ, the first image is who, church? Us. That's the first image. That means if we accept being an example of a disciple of Christ, we have accepted being the illustration of that which we're trying to lead somebody to. That means when they look at us, not look at Brother Cash all the time, not look at Brother Brown, not look at myself, look at, we're talking about if you are leading somebody to Christ, the first image they see is you. You are indeed the example. And you are saying that if I'm an example, I am willing to be imitated. I embrace it and I accept the role of being an example. How many still feel like they want to be an example to somebody? Because being an example takes on responsibility. When you add the, add the suffix ship to something, it denotes condition, character, office, or skill. Like when we say, are you going to be a part of the leadership? Are you endowed in mentorship? Are you about craftsmanship, apprenticeship? Are you about exampleship? Have you accepted this is my office? This is my title? That I am indeed an example of those who are indeed following Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 1, uh, Paul made a statement um, to let people know that, that I will be an example for those who are trying to get to Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 1, the Bible says, he says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also... Of Christ. Yeah. Paul is saying um, that Christ is to be followed. Yeah. And if you are trying to get to Christ, you need to follow behind me. Yeah. Uh, many of us today can say the same thing. Yeah. That as we are trying to lead people to Jesus, we can tell people, follow me. When I was um, in the army, there was a group of people called the Rangers. The Rangers had a slogan called, follow me. Um, they was to be out in front. And wherever the danger was, they was going, they were telling everybody, follow me. You will see upon some people's service patch that that, that that battalion will have the name, follow me. And we should have in our character as we are leading people to Jesus, follow me. Follow me. As I am um, following behind Christ, follow indeed behind me. As Christ leads the way, Paul is telling the church that they did indeed follow him. In 2 Timothy, the book of 2 Timothy is slightly different from the book of 1 Timothy. The book of 1 Timothy is an instructional book that is telling Timothy that the role that he's going to have to take in setting up the church. He's giving a lot of encouragement, but it's more about instructions. But in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy is purely an encouraging book to stay a good soldier for the Lord. Um, Paul is ending his ministry, and therefore his life will be coming to an end. But he writes this letter to his son in the gospel to indeed keep him indeed encouraged to stay a good soldier for the Lord. 
But Paul will use his own example, as well as those who were examples unto Timothy, to first encourage him to stay in the battlefield of faith. To stay on the battlefield. Because this work is not an easy work. And it's not an easy work leading nobody to Jesus. It's not an easy work staying somebody example. Amen? It's not an easy work staying somebody example because you have your own um, feelings about things, right? And you have your own um, um, personality of things. But God wants to have the, the personality of a disciple of Jesus Christ. That means setting aside sometimes the things that we may feel is right and doing the things that are pleasing in God's eyesight. And so this book starts off uh, with Paul giving a, 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 the, the usual introduction of who he is. But I want to look at 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. My first point is this right here. The example of faith. The example of faith. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. Uh, Paul says now, now when I call to remembrance. I want y'all to highlight this. The unfringed faith, the unfringed faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in your grandma Lois and your mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. The unfringed faith. This first point, the example of faith. Paul, P Timothy had an example of faith. And it did not come first from the preacher. It came first from people in his household. Amen? It came first from people who brought up Timothy from a child. It came first from people who were re related to him. Examples of faith. This tells me that the example of faith can first start in the home. Unfringed faith. Another version says that is a sincere faith. It ain't no fake faith. It ain't no sometime in faith. It is sincere faith. The word sincere means without pretense, without deceit. It is pure in mind. And we know inside somebody's household, that's when we really show our true colors. Amen? Um, that's when we're showing um, who we really, really are. See, coming to church, see, we put them clothes on. And we can act a certain way when we come to church. Everybody love everybody at church. Everybody talk good at church. Ain't nobody cussing and fussing like that at church. Ain't nobody being no, ain't nobody raising all kind of saying at church. It first started what, church? Y'all know where this sermon finna go. The example of faith starts what, church? In the home. The example of faith. Yeah, it started when you ride in the car to church. And it started when you on vacation. Yeah, that's where it started. Because oftentimes we're talking about sincere faith. Them children be watching us. They know what we be doing. They know what we be talking about. I was asking one of my class one time. I had, a, I had, had, a, I had that teenage, teenage class. That means they can talk back real good. That teenage, teenage class. And I asked them, I said, uh, would y'all follow me? If y'all knew that I was a drunkard, if y'all knew that I was a smoker, and, and, and my students, they boisterous, you would be a hypocrite. I said, oh. We wouldn't follow you nowhere. And I said, amen. What they telling the truth, church? Well, I, see, Timothy had an example of faith, and it first started in the home. This unfringed and pure faith that his mother and his grandmother had was a sincere faith, and Paul called it sincere. In Acts chapter number 16 and verse number 1, um, Paul talks about how um, the, 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 the writer Luke records that this man named Timothy had a, a, a Jewish mother, but she believed. She was one who understood the word of God. 
She understood God's ordinance of things. She understood how you had to have faith to actually serve God. She knew what the scriptures taught. See, sometimes, church, we need to stop um, acts telling people what the Bible says and show them. Show them that it's in the, how many people still lead somebody? We got to be somebody example and then first start what, church? At the home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, if, if, if that church don't see you when you pray and you come to church, these things will not be a part of their lifestyle because they don't see you praying at home. If they don't see you reading your Bible, only at church. Well, they think it only supposed to happen at church. Y'all get what I'm saying? If they think we only listen to the gospel music in the car going to church, but we don't listen to it any other time. They going to think on Sunday morning you're supposed to turn on gospel music. Am I right about it? The example of faith starts first at home. They watching. Sometimes we pass by the church building broadcast, and Zach say, Daddy, we going to church. He ain't number two. He know the way to the church more than some grown folks know the way to the church building. Amen. And therefore, these children are indeed watching us. But let me tell you something. Your co-workers watching you too. They watching online right now and me. They watching. I told them, you watch online. I know you ain't going to church. You watch online. I said, turn, you're going to be on Facebook anyway. Turn it on and watch what, well, well, I will be it. If I'm your example, you watch what I'm going to be at. I'm going to be at the church. The worship of God in spirit and in truth. But our neighbors watching us, church. Our loved ones watching us. And I'm going to tell you who else watching us. Our enemy is watching us also. They watch it harder than anybody else. Let me, let me move on. I thought I won't be this long as you. Truth be told, there are many of us here today because somebody else has strong faith. It, it, it's somebody in our life. I ain't talking about a family member. Somebody in our life uh, lived a life enough that you listened to, and that they taught you the gospel, and that you are here today because somebody had faith in your life. Somebody believed that you must hear the word. Somebody, somebody believed it with all their sincerity of heart. Somebody believed that you must believe, you must repent, you must confess. You must be baptized in water for the mission of sin. Somebody was sincere that you must be faithful unto death to have a crown of life. And they taught it to you. And you are here today. You may have had a good example. Now the pendulum has swung. And it's time for you to be a good example also. Because Paul told Timothy that, that I see this thing in you. He said, I am persuaded that it is in thee all." So, it's in the also. How many of us can, can honestly say that the faith that somebody had that helped us out to see the Lord is in the also. So, therefore, church, the first example is, therefore, that we must have um, it, it, we, that, that the example of faith. Somebody believe Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 5 through 6. Somebody believe that trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. Somebody believed that in our life. Um, and then he talks about how in all ways acknowledge him. And, and he, he shall direct thy paths. Not you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody walked in the path of the light of the word. Yes, sir. Somebody walked in the path of godliness. Mm -hmm. Somebody was following behind Jesus Followed behind Christ, had a Bible in their hand, and they leaned not to their own understanding, and they was a great example for you. Now is the time for you to be a great example for somebody else. Yes, in all ways, acknowledge him, and he shall, he shall direct thy path. That, that way. I tell you, I, tell, I try to tell people sometimes, uh, uh, I know we go to school for a long, long time, but the science book yeah. can't be the light unto our path. Well. I tell everybody that, 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 that the political arena can't be the light until I pass. Amen. I tell everybody that, that, that the things of, of social media, it cannot be the light until I pass. We must let the Lord be the light until I pass. His word. Um, um, we, we got to live 
to be examples of faith. We don't know how powerful each other influence is. And I've, I've come to the conclusion that even if nobody don't follow you, you'll be an example anyway. It, it, it don't matter if, if, if people don't follow you or not. You still be the example of faith. You be the example of one who trusts in the Lord and trusts in Jesus and trusts in his word. My next point is the example of servitude. Embracing exampleship. The example of servitude. Everybody okay this morning? In 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1 and I think it's verse number, verse number 8, Paul says this. He says, be thou not therefore, thou, thou therefore ashamed, ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Of the testimony of our Lord. Nor of me, he says, his prisoner. Nor, write this down. Me, his prisoner. But be thou but partaker, be thou partaker of, the afflictions of the afflictions of the gospel, of the gospel according to the power according to of the God. Power of God. Now, 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 Paul here says something inside of this text. He says, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. Now, I know many times we read biblical things in our, in our, in our texts and we always say, well, I want to be a friend of God like Abraham. I want to have humbleness just like Moses. I want to be a man after God's own heart, just like David. What about being the son of consultation, just like Barnabas? You got to be a Bible reader to know that one, though. But I have yet to hear many people say that I am a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, don't be ashamed now of the testimony of Jesus nor of me his captive, his bond servant. Uh, uh, many people don't take that title because to say that I am a slave to Jesus Christ, Paul ain't talking about being a, a prisoner by circumstance, not a prisoner by in bonds and chains. He said, I am a prisoner of the Lord. I am his captive. Please do not be ashamed of me. Many times we, we, we go around saying, yes, we are people of faith. Yes, we are servants for the Lord. But I don't find many people saying that they are captive, that they are a prisoner, that they are a bond servant unto the Lord. Paul is saying that I am a, I'm, I'm, I'm a slave to Christ. And then he says that, and be thou a partaker of the affliction. Paul is saying that I want you to understand that, that I am a slave and I want you to not neglect that this is going to be some hard work. This is going to be some hardship, hardship according to the gospel, according to Jesus Christ. He said, be a partaker of it. Don't run from it. Be a partaker of it. When I, was, when I worked in the, 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 uh, the iron foundry, they used to have beers on the board that worked throughout all the plants. And, and if you were, the plant was real big, so they would allow you, if a, if a job was on the board, they would say, go look at the job before you bid on it. Go look at the job before you bid on it now, because you might not want that job. And, and some of the best paying jobs were around the high design, amen? I mean, the best paying job was around the high. Now, when I was a youngster in the plant, I walked up there on that casting floor, I walked up there in that melting room, and I said, I don't want no, no part of this. It's a little bit too hot for me. I mean, I'm 2,600 degrees, and I don't want to be around that that hot. But you had men up there working. You heard what I said? Men up there working. And so as I got a little older, and years started to roll, and I started saying, well, let me go back to that casting floor. Because now I have grown up a little bit, and, and I can go up there and provide more for my family. And so I put my beard in and I worked on the casting flow, but something had to change in my mind to be a partaker if I wanted a greater reward. I wanted a greater reward. So I couldn't stay down there on the easy flow. I had to go up to the top where they first melt the iron until where things got a little bit hot. But it paid good, Blood Prince. Oh, it paid better. It paid better. 
And so Paul is saying, do not be ashamed of the testimony of Christ. Yes, it get hot. Do not, do not be ashamed of being a prisoner of Jesus Christ as I am. You be a partaker of the affliction. The next two verses tell us why. Everybody like to hear stuff like this. In verse number nine, he says, who, who has saved us. And called, called us, us with, with a, a holy calling. Holy calling. That's why I'm, I'm a prisoner of Christ. Mm -hmm. Not according to, to our, our works, works but, but according, according to, to his, his own, purpose own purpose and grace, and grace which, which he has given, given us in Christ, in, in, in Christ Jesus before, before, the, before the world, world began. began, but is now made manifest. Is made manifest by the appearance, by the appearance of, our Savior, Jesus of our Savior Jesus Christ. What did he do for us? He has abolished, abolished death. death and he brought has life. brought us life and, and immortality, immortality in life. light through the, the gospel. gospel. Do not be ashamed of what comes along with teaching and preaching and serving in the gospel because what God has given us is a great thing. He's given us something. He's given us something against death. He's given us something against life. He's given us immortality and it's all through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I'm, I'm not ashamed of being a captive. I'm not ashamed of being a prisoner. I want you to be a partaker also. Look at, look at the book of uh, Ephesians chapter number four. The example of servitude. In Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter four. We'll read verses one through three. He says, I dealt for the what church? The, the prisoner of the Lord. Of the Lord. Beseech you. I beseech you that you walk worthy. That you walk worthy of the vocation. Of the calling. Wherewith you were called. You're this called. was an invitation. It's an invitation that you come up under when you come up under the Lord. Mm -hmm. He said, I beseech you to walk worthy of now your profession. Mm -hmm. Verse 2 says what, Brother With all lowliness. He said, now when you walk it. And meekness. You walk it with all lowliness. And meekness. And meekness. With long suffering. With long suffering. Forbearing for one another. Bearing in love. In love. Keep going. Verse Endeavoring. Endeavoring. To keep the unity of the spirit. To keep the unity of the spirit. In the bond of peace. In the bond of peace. Oh, you got, you got to be lowly in mind when you do this work. Yes, sir. You got to have some meekness about yourself. You get high minds out of your own thing. You walk away from what God is trying to do with mankind. I'm sorry if we want to be in the world and we want to be head busters, but we got to be peacemakers. We got to be about being peacemakers when you serve in this capacity. And if you're an example of servitude to anybody, you got to be a peacemaker. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 9 through 11. Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 through 11. I'm going to get through it. Paul has, has heard about what's happening on, down there in Colossae. And he writes this letter to them, and he says, "For for, for, for this, this cause, we also, we also, since the day we heard, it, since we heard the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you. We have not ceased to pray for you, and to desire, and to desire that, that you might be you might filled, be fulfilled with the knowledge of his with will, knowledge, and with his and will, and all, all wisdom, wisdom and, and spiritual, spiritual understanding. I, I think that's the same thing that Solomon was praying for. Right. Uh, he, he he wanted Paul was saying, I want to make sure that y'all got some knowledge of his will." And some wisdom and the spirit you understand. You got to read the book of Colossians to see this now. Everybody got some homework today. Yeah. To go home and read the book of Colossians. Yeah. To understand what is the will of God. Right. And Paul was saying that he wants them to have some wisdom. And some knowledge and some spiritual understanding. understanding. Keep going, keep going, but okay. but Brown. That she might walk worthy. There you go again. That she may walk worthy. Worthy of the Lord, of the Lord, unto all pleasing, unto all pleasing, being fruitful, being fruitful in every good work, in every good work. I, I want to pause right there. A lot of us want to be faithful, but we're not being fruitful. We want to be faithful, but we're not being fruitful. Yeah, our seed been watered, and yeah, yeah, we didn't grow, but we ain't planting seeds in somebody else. We got to be what church? Faithful and fruitful. I got a sermon with, with that one though. Right. Faithful and fruitful. 
in every good work, mm -hmm. increasing, increasing in the in knowledge, the knowledge of, God. of God. Verse 11 says Strengthened what? with all might. Strengthened with all might. According to his According glorious to his power. glorious power. To, unto all patience. Unto all patience. And long suffering. And long suffering. With joyfulness. With joyfulness. That's the attitude he wanted us to have. To do it all with joy. To do it all with satisfaction. To all, to all be um, extremely excited about why we are doing what we are doing for the Lord. It's a difference when you uh, go to work and you know people that are excited about their job. They work a little bit harder than a disgruntled employee. The person that's excited about serving the Lord, they got some joy about they stuff you can't take away. I, I, I bet yesterday up in this place, everybody was in here and they were serving the Lord and they had a joyful day because they knew what they were doing was pleasing the Lord. Couldn't nobody break their spirit. Couldn't nobody come in here and shake their faith. They was in here. I bet they was shouting to the, to, to the hills. Then everybody know in Bessemer who they serve. The same thing was going on this morning. We were doing the same thing. I heard them sopranos kick in on that song. I heard them altos, altos come in on that song. I heard the bass drop that note because before they knew who they served, they didn't went, went worry about nobody else. Don't worry about nobody else. I came to serve the Lord, and I am not ashamed. Amen? Amen. Therefore, when we understand this, we have joy in our heart about this. When people say, why are you being so patient? And why are you being so kind? Well, I'm a servant for the Lord. I'm a servant for the Lord. And therefore, my mind probably will have me in another place. But as I serve the Lord, I come be under the umbrella because I want to be fruitful in all good works. Amen? Amen? My last point as I close, and the, the example of sacrifice. The example of sacrifice. In 2 Timothy chapter number 1 and verse number 12 through 13, um, Paul talks about this because of the fact that uh, Paul has been through some things as Timothy has been watching him grow through some things in preaching the gospel. I mean, Timothy's been a witness to these things. And he know that what's going on with Paul, it may fall upon him. But he talks to him to encourage him. To stay with Christ. And verse number 12, he said, For which cause I suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am what, church? I'm not ashamed. For I know who I believe, and I persuade that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Paul has done some labor and work to try to keep his soul committed to the Lord and also keep others committed to the Lord also. And Paul said, I am not ashamed of that suffering. I am a preacher, I am an apostle, I'm a teacher of the Gentiles, and I am not ashamed of it because I know in whom I have believed. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Whatever comes with preaching the gospel, let it come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Paul saying that I have been an example of the sacrifice to try to keep those souls preserved until this day. A lot of times we worried about having an estate for our family. A lot of times we worried about having the, the will right for the family. But all we worried about keeping the soul saved, keeping the soul committed. Why are we trying to commit our soul also? For as many people come into this world, there is more responsibility. There is more responsibility to try to keep those souls close to the Lord because they will come to a day. That day. That day going to come. Whether you like it or not, whether you're dead or whether you woke, it's going to come. And Paul is saying that I have been committed unto my soul and the keeping of other souls because of that day. He's persuaded. He's persuaded. And he's telling Paul, telling Peter, I mean, telling Timothy that he has to understand his role. Verse 13 sums it up all. Verse 13 says what? Brother, brother, who got the microphone? Brother Brown, he says what? He hold says, fast. hold fast the form of sound the words. The form of sound words which thou hast heard of me. Thou hast heard of me. Mm -hmm. Be and ye followers of me and my followers of Christ. Also, he's saying, You have heard these words of me. As I follow Christ, you follow me mm -hmm. to Christ. He's saying, Hold fast to this pattern. Yeah. Hold fast to this stamp. Hold fast to this mold of sound words. The Greek, Greek word for form is tupos, 
which means Palestine and the mold. He says, this is the, the words that I give you. I want you to hold fast to these sound words. These words are worth something for the ministry. These words have value. These words are not vain, which thou hast heard of me. And these words are all in faith, faith and, and love, love, which is, which in, is in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. I know we want the children to be, uh, to be somebody in the sports world. I know we want um, our neighbors to be somebody in the community. I know we want people in our family to be somebody that we can be proud of. But I hope that we are trying to be great examples of faith, great examples of servitude, and great examples of sacrifice that they see in us leading people to Jesus Christ in the faith and love that is in him. I hope that we are being great examples. I hope that we are embracing exampleship. Romans chapter number 12 and verse number 1. I hope this is all our, our, our mindset as Paul talks to the church at Rome. He says, I perceive ye Therefore, brethren, brethren by, by the mercies, the mercies of, God, of God, that you present your bodies, you present your bodies a living sacrifice. A living I hope the children in our household mm -hmm. see us giving these things up mm -hmm. for the Lord. Holy. Holy. Acceptable, acceptable unto, God, unto God. Which is your reasonable which service. Which is our reasonable service. Mm -hmm. I hope that they see us making the proper sacrifices yes, sir. unto the Lord. Yes, sir. I hope that people in our family that we come in contact with yeah. are seeing us making our life a living sacrifice unto the Lord. I hope that that, that person of weak faith that might be sitting next to you right now, see that they sitting next to somebody that's willing to be a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Many times we want other folks to lead folks to Christ. But if that person is in your life, that is your responsibility to lead these people to Jesus. They might be short. They might be tall. It don't matter. They might be old and they might be young. They might believe things different. But you continue to be an example. Whether they believe or whether they don't. You be an example. Yeah, you got to have a good attitude at home by serving the Lord. Because they hear us. They hear us when we say, I don't feel like going to church this day. They hear us, and they say, man, the preacher preached long today. They hear, and they say, they ain't sing my song today. They hear us. They hear us. They always got something going on down at that church. They hear us. They always want to be there at morning service. They got, a, they got an evening program, and they got a 5 o'clock service, too. Oh, they hear us. They hear us. They call it, what, three church, Brother Brown? They, they, they hear us, church. They hear us. The people who are under our tutelage, the people they hear that we are mentoring, they hear us, and we need to be, ex be able to explain it by the word of God. I was um, amongst my crew the other day, with last night, and they was asking me, they said, well, Bill, we ain't going to get off about 10, 9 in the morning. What you going to do? I said, I'm going to the pool pit. That's what I'm going to do. What are you talking about what I'm going to do? And, and, they, and they asked me, they said, man, you ain't got to uh, go to church every Sunday. I said, the Bible says upon the first day of the week, the disciples came together. Now, you ain't no disciple. You ain't got to do this. But if you're a disciple, he gives you an example. The disciples came together to do what, church? Break bread. I got some bread to break. I got to meet him at his table. And so, therefore, um, for those who are not disciples, they don't understand. But once you come up under the tutelage of Jesus Christ, he said, do this in remembrance of me, as long as I'm able. I'm going to meet him at his table. As long as I'm able, I'm going to sing the songs unto his name. As long as I'm able, we come together to pray. As long as I'm able, I'm going to give according to what's prospered in my heart. I'm, I'm going I'm to do the service work of the Lord as long as I'm able. And I guarantee you, nobody here tired as me. Because the minister got to set the example. We got to set the example. If you're in any type of leadership role, you be the example. Whether you be in the pulpit, whether you be driving a car, or leading your household, you be the example of both faith, servitude, and sacrifice. Knowing that the Lord looks at our labor and it's not in vain. 
You've heard the word. You've heard that Jesus Christ came to save sinners. He came and, 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 and had with an invitation to invite all those unto God through him. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to God by me. So listen to Jesus. Man can say a lot of things about salvation, but I trust in the word. Because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I check behind every man that preached. I don't care how, how high his stature is in, in the world. I don't care how low his stature is in the world. I would rather, I rather be up under the man preaching the truth under the tree than a man preaching the lie inside the auditorium. You all hear what I say? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You must believe. You must repent. You must have a change my mind mindset to come to the Lord and to be his captive, to be his slave, to be abundant in his kingdom. He is king. We just servants, amen? You got to be proud about being a servant in the right kingdom because one kingdom is going to go up and one kingdom is going to remain. You got to be happy about that and joyful about that, that you are willing to confess that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Deny me before, before men. I'm not going to deny you. But confess me before men. I confess you before my Father which is in heaven. Here's a command that Jesus gave to his apostles before, after he, before he ascended unto the heaven. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe and is baptized, that creature shall be saved. You, you, you really can't get around baptism. You can try all you want, but I wouldn't advise you to try for you to get in the kingdom, to get in the Lord's church and go around water. Amen. The command is he that believe and is immersed, baptizo, buried in water, he shall be saved. But if he does not believe, ain't no need to baptize him. And he shall be condemned. Then he'll be faithful unto death because everybody want that crown on What kingdom you know? that the servants get a crown. I don't know one kingdom on earth that the servants get a crown. But in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, there's going to be a day where he hand the servants a crown. Those who have been faithful unto death. Passing our crowns to the servants. I want my crown. Hope you want your crown. I can't, want, I can't want your crown for you. You got to want the crown for yourself. Best be faithful and be fruitful as we are striving to do the work of the Lord. Be good examples to people you come in contact with, church. Be good examples. It might be the waiter at a restaurant this close to coming to Jesus, and all they know is you because you're a member of the Lord's church. It might be somebody, I know Walmart tough, but it might be somebody lying. They know what church you go to. Might be somebody following you on, on, online and they're and they watching everything you type in. And they want to come to the Lord, but they're looking at you. Be a good example unto the Lord. Be willing to be a good example in what church? Faith, servitude, and sacrifice. If that be one, let us come as we stand and send an invitation to him. There's a fountain free is there one? tears for you is there one? and me. Is there one who wanna come to Let Lord today? us haste, oh haste to his brink. Is there one? Tis the fountain of love is there one? Is there one? from the source above, and, and he bids us all freely drink and will you come is one? to the fountain is one? free will you no time like the present no time like the present tears for you and me Your thirsty, thirsty soul Anybody need prayer, you to stand. Anybody need prayer, you to stand. Brother Cagney, lead us in the word of prayer. Please stand. Let us.